So in this example, we have a box on a slope at an angle of theta degrees. And the coefficient of friction between the box and the slope is 0.5. The box is modelled as a rectangular laminar. It has a mass of 2.5 kilos and it has a width of 0.3 metres and a height of 0.7 metres. Now the idea here is that the angle theta is going to be steadily increased. What we need to do is find the, very, the range of values of theta such that the box will begin to slide down the slope. And then part B, find the range of values of theta such that the box will begin to topple. So... We have the weight of the box, which will be acting through the centre. OK, now, the centre of my rectangle, now this is, this is the bit that um, sets us slightly apart from uh, the situations that we had before, where we had the block on a horizontal surface, I always drew that the weight acted there, but actually it's acting through its centre of mass. We, but we didn't really need to consider that in our diagram, but this time we do. So the centre of mass acts is right at the centre of your rectangle, as you'll probably expect it to be. The weight here um, is 2.5 g. Okay. And we have a normal reaction force, R, and we're going to have a frictional force, Fr, okay, acting up the slope. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to resolve um, perpendicular to the slope. So for part A, and taking that direction as positive. So we're going to have R, first of all, working that direction. And then, if we think about completing the triangle, then this side, well, that angle is going to be theta degrees. So this is going to be 2.5 G cosine theta. OK, so take away 2.5 g cosine theta, and that's going to be equal to zero. Now, that's telling me that r is equal to 2.5 g cosine theta, and we have that the friction must be equal to mu, 0.5, times by r. So 0.5 times 2.5, let's get that as a fraction. So 5 quarters g cosine theta. OK, so that's my friction. Right, now I'm going to resolve um, parallel to the slope. I'm going, I'm going to take up the slope as positive. Uh, so we've got the friction which is 5 quarters g cosine theta. Take away the component of the weight, which is 2.5 g sine theta is equal to 0. OK, so um, I'm going to divide through by cosine theta. So 5 quarters g take away 2.5 g tan theta is 0. So I can solve this for tan. So I'm going to have the 5 quarters, I'm going to divide that by 2.5. The g's cancel. So tan theta would be equal to 1 half. So that implies that theta is the inverse tan of a half which is 26.565, etc. degrees. So theta would have to be greater than 26.6 degrees to three significant figures in order for the block to start to slide down the slope. Now, as for it toppling, it's going to topple about this point. So let's call that point A. And the normal reaction force will now go through A, because that's the point of contact. 
Okay, so with that in mind then, I'm going to take moments about point A, and it's going to be equal to zero. So the only force I need to consider uh, is actually the weight here, right? Uh, because the friction and the normal reaction force go through the point of uh, interest. So we are 0.15 meters away from the, um, the perpendicular component, so that component of the weight. So that is 2.5 g cosine theta, and that's going to go round in a clockwise motion. So take away 0.15 times 2.5 g cosine theta. OK, because that is going to go through, I haven't drawn it very well, but it's going to go through the centre of my rectangle. OK, so then uh, the other component, so that component, is acting essentially in that direction. So you can kind of think of it as you've got that component and you've got that component. So that component there is 0.35 metres away, if you project it through. So that's your 2.5 g sine theta. And that's going to be going round in an anti-clockwise motion. So plus 0.35 times by 2.5 g sine theta equals zero. OK, so I'm going to divide through by cosine theta again, um, as well as tidy this up. So 0 0.15 times 2.5 is 3 eighths. So we've got minus 3 eighths g. Uh, I could also divide through by g, actually. Let's get rid of the g's. And divide through by cosine theta. Plus 0 0.35 times 2.5, so 7 eighths tan theta is zero. So tan theta here is seven eighths uh, divided, sorry, three eighths divided by seven eighths, so that's going to be three sevenths. So then theta is the inverse tan of three sevenths, so 23.198 etc degrees. So theta would be greater than 23.2 degrees to three significant figures. So what that's telling me is that as you slowly increase the angle, it's actually going to topple first before it starts to slide. OK, now key things to point out here, OK, uh, that we're going to generalize uh, in the next video. Notice how tan of theta here was equal to one half, which was the same as the coefficient of friction. And tan theta here was equal to 3 over 7, which is the same as 0 0.3 over 0 0.7. Okay, so keep those things in mind because we're going to generalize those in the next video.